Jonathan Adler wants to teach you how to decorate like a designer. His Lux, cheeky work is a perfect mix of fun and fabulous, which basically sums up his personal vibe as well. history that's very personal. When I moved to New York, a friend of mine worked for a decorator who bought this apartment. I came here as like a 23 year old and was like, oh no, she didn't. One day I can dream of living in an apartment like this. Along the way, Adler also drops knowledge on everything from the dirty secrets of Victorian era to the origins of mauve to the state of today's design scene, all with the same sense of play he brings to his work. Adler said, and I think so often in decorating magazines, you see spaces that were just done by the decorator and they completely lack personality. So I hope that my Wondrium series helps teach people how to get the glamorous, polished look of a decorator done space but with the details that make it personal. Cut to, I met Sliman on a blind date and he had just bought the apartment from our mutual friend and I was like, oh, you'll do. So all it took to snag Jonathan Adler was a bit of fancy real estate. I like to explain how I come to my own style. There are three filters through which I see the design world, three voices that wend their way into all of my work, from objects to furniture to decorating, pop, natural and deluxe. Pop is about bright, bold, minimalist, somewhat cheeky voices and muses like Andy Warhol and Ellsworth Kelly and is an opportunity to be witty and artistic. And surreal and gold and dreamy beaded moment. It's all eyes. Fornicetti, bits of vintage flung in. Sliman has been very, very sweet to me. People sort of are gonna me... think I'm called Sliman. Natural comes from the fact that I am an artisan and that I believe in impeccable materials and honest, timeless craft. And deluxe is more luxury. In the Wondrium lesson, he mentions velvet, sparkles, gold and chinoiserie. I hope that one of these styles will resonate or that people will create their own personal, idiosyncratic style. And play with it like do your thing and I'll just be a happy spectator. Well, I always tell people, listen, if you lived with your hairdresser, would you do your own hair? No. When the neighboring apartment... In an ideal world, your sartorial and decorating styles would be the same. I often see women who look very groovy and chic and edgy, and I imagine them living in a minimalist, art-filled home, but then I get there, and it's a cabbage rose English country cottage look. Sometimes there is a complete dissonance between someone's sartorial and decorating styles. It's a lot easier to change your clothes than your decor. Turned the second floor into a little cozy library. We decided to make it very like dark and clubby and kind of butch. So I did a David Hicks wallpaper on the ceiling 
painted everything in like this deep midnight blue, did my Baxter sofa in like pear green with fringe, some beaded artwork that's loose and insane. Adler said, you have to really think about what makes you happy at home. Are you a person who loves to have one handbag you use every day, or do you need 10? I have learned that I only keep pieces around me that spark joy. I just happen to have a lot of them. I am a minimalist slash maximalist. I try to keep it sleek and modern and elegant and clean lined. Our bedroom. We had our brilliant artist friend, John Paul Philippe, create these two eye paintings so that when you're looking at the wall, what's actually happening is you're being looked back at by these paintings which is genius. I am actually a lot more restrained in my use of color than people might think. I would follow my lead and go to timeless, forever colors such as black and white, which are in the foundation of everything I do. For our War Holiday, a celebration of Andy Warhol in the early noughts, and now it is in our bedroom. Lots of funk icons from a Michael Jackson sculpture we bought at the flea market to this incredible Ed Paschke painting of Sly Stone that used to hang in the Playboy Mansion. The bedroom has this wacky little Juliet balcony which goes to the upstairs floor, which was our bedroom, and then we sort of relocated down here. Then you inject an accent color in smaller items such as pillows and accessories. This can be a go-to formula for creating design that will be lasting and not too ephemeral. The colors you consider should stick around for a while and be more restrained in larger pieces and freer in smaller ones. Transforming a home into a lively, welcoming space is no small feat. But if anyone is up for the task, it's Jonathan Adler. By this artist called Remo Saracini, and they're perfect. And it's sort of paranoia and surrealism, all mixed into a sort of lethal combination. Eyes staring at you everywhere, there's a big eye lamp. Yeah, there's a lot of like freaky shit in here, from the Nicola eye to this incredible jet. As I always said, colorful pillows are the exclamation point of the home. They're easy to add, easy to move around, and easy to change out if you get bored. Incorporate vintage, every space gets an added dose of character from vintage furnishings. But be careful not to get caught up in finishes and upholstery, focus on the basics. When shopping for vintage furniture, try to ignore the color and focus on shape, function, and scale. There are no rules for anything in life, and the same applies to design. It is all about what you like in life. One good thing in home decor is if you don't like it change it. <laughs> 